<laughs> it's hard to find a lot of food in the rainforest, but one of my favorite bush meats are the grasshoppers. I like to call them corn hoppers. And you can fry them up in a jiffy. The grasshoppers in their kin are called orthoptera. If you could eat all the orthoptera, a walk through the woods would be a lot quieter, since members of this order are the real songsters of the insect world. While katydids and crickets make music with their wings at night, most grasshoppers jam by rubbing their forewing against their hind leg. These little nubbins make all that music. Well, Elvis's first guitar wasn't fancy either. One family actually grooves by snapping its wings, but others are deaf and dumb and not much fun. Grasshoppers hear sound through an eardrum-like structure on the abdomen. Just like expert tropical bird watchers that rely more on sound to find a little green bird in a sea of fluttering green leaves, Grasshopper people listen for specific calls. Differences in rhythm mean a different species. They crank their music between 10,000 and 20,000 hertz, which means some of us can't hear the whole tune. What? I can't hear that high. Grasshoppers are primitive insects that have a pair of huge hind legs. No steroids, just evolution. Grasshoppers have chewing mouth parts and are strictly vegetarian. Grasshoppers have incomplete metamorphosis, which means the immature stages look like adults, but the wings are short or absent. Grasshoppers' antennae are generally a lot shorter than those of crickets and katydids, and they usually have a three segmented hind tarsi. A few grasshopper or locust species can cause massive agricultural losses in many parts of the world, but populations rarely get out of control in Costa Rica. Grasshoppers are active during the day and are mostly found in open habitats. They are prey to many large animals and even smaller animals, like army ants. Now that's a big drumstick. You know, there are a lot of tasty insects out there. But only the grasshoppers are kosher. And that goes way back to the Old Testament. Now Costa Ricans don't like to eat them. But the Mexicans like them fried, salted, and with picante. My opinion is, the fresher, the better. There are over 100 species of grasshoppers in Costa Rica, divided into 10 families. Many species are colorful to advertise their bad taste. They can be seen triangulating a potential jump, because of course, they do hop. But others prefer to quietly exit stage left. Another defense is spewing out a little nasty chew juice. Just walking through a field will scare up many kinds of grasshoppers. Pygmy grasshoppers are common species. As the name suggests, they are quite small, like less than half an inch. They are usually very cryptic and not seen until they hop out of the way. Often they can be found along streams, where they eat algae and ferns. Certain species can even swim and die. Some think that they ingest dirt with the intention of eating nematodes and other soil animals. That could be good for the immune system. <sighs> They have two tarsal segments of the fore and middle feet and three on the hind foot. The family distinction is the hard covering that extends from the head all the way to the wingtip. 
Orthopteran body armor. Pygmy mole crickets are really grasshoppers, but these very small animals dig into sandy soil near streams to feed on algae. They have short antennae, their hind tarsi has only one segment, and the tibia of the foreleg is enlarged for digging. Mole crickets, right? The elytra, covering the wings, is more like a miniskirt. If you look at the rear bumper, there appear to be four cerci, but actually two were valves for laying eggs. The two real cerci have two segments. Apparently, there is no common name for this family. How about pygmy gopher grasshoppers, since they also dig in the soil and are small? This family is so similar to the previous that it takes a hand lens to tell them apart. Of the four appendages on the rear end, figure out which are the cerci. If it has just one segment, bingo, it's a pygmy gopher grasshopper, or whatever it will be called someday. Tropical monkey grasshoppers jump around in the trees and shrubs, like, well, monkeys. Or at least some biologists thought so, once, a long time ago, and probably wasted. They're really easy to tell apart, because the antennae is shorter than the front femur, and they're usually wingless. They can be found on the tops of leaves, sunning themselves while holding their legs out at a 90 degree angle while practicing grasshopper Tai Chi. Some foam grasshoppers produce a frothy toxic excretion upon being attacked. Strangely, these grasshoppers have a tympana but no way to produce sound. Their signature distinction is the suture before the eyes. The majority of grasshopper species are shorthorn grasshoppers. Their antennae are much shorter than their body, and many have a slanted face. These grasshoppers are common in open areas, like cattle pastures, or in light gaps where this green and gold solanum grasshopper lives. Their pronotum doesn't extend backward over the abdomen. In Costa Rica, there are 10 subfamilies of accreted grasshoppers. One of these is common in North America, the spur-throated grasshoppers. Their spur is located between the front legs. Strange place for a spur. Half of these subfamilies are truly neotropical, inhabiting forests and swamps. Unlike most northern species, they don't stridulate, that is, make a lot of racket, but rather prefer a quiet life in the rainforest. To differentiate shorthorn from lubber grasshoppers, the shorthorn have only an inner apical fixed spine, while the lubbers have both inner and outer fixed ones. These four movable spines don't count. Shorthorn grasshoppers almost always have wings. Those species that sing do so by rubbing the strengthened vein of the wing against these pegs on the inside of the hind femur. Their tympana, or ear, is located on the first abdominal segment. The lubber grasshoppers are only found in the New World. They are generally large, heavy-bodied dudes with a good-sized thoracic crest and a bad case of acne. Many species lack wings, and others just hate to fly, thus their name, because they are land lubbers. Since flying away isn't a defense option, many release foaming, repugnant gunk from their mouth or hiss and buzz with their wings. All the lubbers have a thoracic spike and many have colorful wings. The giant grasshopper 
can reach half a foot in length, and with a wingspan of 10 inches, you could almost have a hunting season on them. They are not that common and tend to inhabit the tops of trees. But if you ever see one fly off, its colorful wings make for quite a sight. Anything this big invites messing with, but be careful with all those spines. A long time ago, these were the Tonka toys of indigenous boys, who tied strings to them, which contrasts to nature-deficient modern kids. These kids don't know how much fun a grasshopper can be.